The following presentation is brought to you by Discovery Education, leading the world of digital and video learning. Discovery Education, connect to a world of learning. To keep our muscles working over sustained periods requires another strength, a strength you'll hardly believe you have. This hidden strength can keep you going for hours of non-stop action. Imagine swimming the English Channel, 21 grueling miles in bone-chilling water. Twice as many people have climbed Everest than have made it across the Channel. As he attempts the epic swim, Paul Hopfensberger will rely on strength from what he's eaten. Steaks, pastas, um, bananas, lots of bananas, and everything. To, like, so the bananas make up slow energy release you know, when, when, you're, when you're swimming and what have you. So that's, that's the sort of thing I've been eating and training on. Paul has gained 16 pounds. And it's not muscle. He's about to learn that when it comes to pushing toward new limits, his body's friend is fat. Paul Hopfensberger is trying to swim 21 miles across the English Channel. As part of his training, he gains 16 pounds of fat. His fat cells have grown, thickening Paul's arms, chest, and belly. It's more athletic than it sounds, or looks. Our early ancestors probably looked like this. For them, fat was a vital way of storing energy. A competitive swimmer is very much like ancient man in being constantly active and balancing their food intake with a tremendous amount of physical activity as ancient man hunted for food. So if we look at a swimmer, you'd be surprised to find that most of the fuel that they're using is really fat, both fat from the diet and fat that's stored. As Paul heads into the frigid water, his success will depend on how he manages his body's reserves. To start with, carbohydrates from Paul's last meal, stored in the liver and muscles, quickly convert to glucose, then combine with oxygen to power him forward. Paul's muscles are now burning 3,000 calories an hour, the same number of calories in three large hamburgers, but after three miles, the easy access glucose is running out. Paul's facing a fuel crisis. It's a critical point many athletes know as the wall. It's the moment marathon runners dread. The average person has about two to three hours worth of energy. Once that is depleted, then you have what's called hitting the wall, where you just feel this physical fatigue and even this mental anguish, like you're just done, you need to stop. The brain detects low blood sugar levels, making you feel so bad you want to quit. But to keep going, your brain has to trigger a new fuel source. To get it, the body does something astonishing. It begins to cannibalize itself, feeding off its own fat. For most of us, fat cells aren't created or destroyed. They just shrink or swell according to how much fat we're carrying. When glucose runs low, we tap fat cells for reserve energy. But fat takes longer to process than carbohydrates. That supply gap often stops runners cold. The best runners endure the process so often they're used to managing the fuel supply changeover. That lets them make it past the wall to the finish. But triumph for these guys is only a quarter of the time Paul needs to meet his challenge. Like runners, he has to switch fuel supplies and start consuming his own fat. 
Paul's extra layers add 60,000 calories to his fuel tank. That's 10 times the energy of the glucose his liver and muscles used when he dived in. But converting fat to fuel demands extra oxygen, straining his lungs. He's sucking in 20 gallons of air a minute, absorbed through tubes narrower than a human hair, and across tiny membranes whose total surface area is equal to half a tennis court. This burst powers Paul through 12 miles during the first six hours, but that's only halfway across the channel. To succeed, he'll need to keep pumping fuel to his muscles almost until nightfall. The fact is, all our bodies are engineered like Paul's. It's just that he's tuned his up through practice. Paul's training focused on improving his heart's performance. The average person has a 5-liter cardiac output. Well, someone who's trained would put out about 35 liters of blood out of the heart, which that much more blood delivers that much more oxygen. It can make that much more energy and continue without fatigue. Each minute, Paul's heart pumps seven times more blood than our hearts do. And he's been doing that for 12 hours. It's propelled him 18 miles across the channel, with the French coast now just three miles away. His swim has cost Paul over 14 pounds of body fat. In a day, he's used more calories than most of us use in a week. Yet we're all designed to store and expend huge amounts of energy at this rate. Despite fatigue, Paul keeps his heart and muscles going for the final push. After 14 exhausting hours, Paul touches land. He's made it. It was, it was a bloody experience, I think. <laughs> Strange to say, challenges like this are within all our grasp. All because ancient ancestors struggling to survive the wild stored fat fuel for stamina. It's only one of many ways we can push our bodies to their limits. Locked inside us, a network of muscle and bone give us unparalleled flexibility, exquisite coordination, and in a crisis, brute force and the speed to escape. When it comes to strength, a superhero lives inside every one of us the human body.